Thank you so much, George. That was fascinating. I know we've had a lot of like pretty interesting uh, conversation in the chat too. So if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, ask them in the chat and I'll ask George for you. Um, in the meantime, we've got some questions on the research uh, hub discussion page. Mm -hmm. So Samuel Beck says, uh, figure five in your paper illustrates transactions into and out of the shielded pool. And then they quote you saying, most users not only withdraw the exact number of Zcash they deposited into the pool, but do so very quickly after the initial deposit. Samuel, Samuel imagines that this transparent transaction behavior would render the anonymity provided by the shielded pool much less effective and has two questions. The first one is, how should a Zcash user withdraw Zcash from the shielded pool if they wish to remain anonymous? Would it be better to slowly withdraw small portions from a large initial deposit using multiple T addresses? So that's an excellent question. Um, basically, what happened is the following. Uh, when the Zcash developers developed uh, you know, uh, the Zcash protocol, they stated the following. When a user deposits into the pool, he must split his coins. But what they didn't add is the fact that one of these, both of these values need to be bigger than zero. So what people did, let's say, for example, you want to deposit 10 Zcash into the pool. People sent 10 Zcash to one address and zero to the other. So basically the split you know, makes no sense. So um, the first and most important thing to do is when you deposit money into the pool, you need to split. And you need to split actually in a smart way. What you can do is you, you can see what withdrawals come out of the pool. And you can split your coins in such a way that your split will uh, have a big anonymity set. If you see, for example, let's say that a lot of uh, transactions come out of the pool as withdrawals and carry the value of five Zcash, then if you deposit 20, it would be smart to split it into uh, five, 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 because then your uh, anonymity set will be bigger. If you split it in, uh, let's say, 19 and one, if you don't see any big deposit uh, um, that is you know, over 15, then the withdrawal of uh, value 19 may be correlated to you. So the most important thing is to split your coins. The second uh, very important thing is to actually wait a bit. Don't deposit and withdraw immediately. Basically, don't do what the majority of the Zcash users did when we, we did our um, investigation. So kind of building off that question, one thing I just thought of is uh, what time frame should you be looking at with the five, 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 and five? Like how, how recent should uh, similar transactions be? Well, uh, of course, this depends on uh, what you need uh, the Zcash for, right? So if you're, you know, if you're, if it's very urgent and you have to do a transaction, obviously you 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 can't just put it in the shielded pool. Let's say four days because you just you need the money. But if you can do my suggestion would be to keep it as long as possible. Like, like this. Um, there's no straightforward answer to it. Like to give you a particular, you know, timing. But basically, the the um, short rule is that the more you keep them, probably the more anonymous you're going to be. Cool. Thank you. And then the second part of Sam's question is: uh, after speaking with the founders and miners, did they describe why they used this transaction pattern given its transparency? So uh, we communicated with the founders. Uh, I don't think we made any conversations with any miners, as but as far as I can remember. Uh, but in terms of the founders, uh, they did not, you know, justify uh, their decision, and neither we did ask, you know, why they chose to operate this way. Because you can obviously see that, you know, it's everyone's right to behave um, as um, in the way they want. But what we did show, and what is, you know, um, w what is highly likely, and the actu actually the founders um, silently uh, actually confirmed this. Um, assumption of ours is that if they if you use the pool as the founders did you're probably going to get de-anonymized so they didn't use it in the best uh, possible way but the reason behind uh, this usage is um, you know unclear to me what we do know and unfortunately i don't have much data to support this uh, argument but i remember i did see it after the um, the release of our paper the founders actually changed their behavior they started behaving in a more you know privacy uh, preserving way in terms of the usage uh, of the pool. So kind of building off that, like, has anybody released any uh, data trying to identify the founders with this new pattern of behavior? Or have they figured out a way to do it that uh, helps them remain anonymous? Um, as far as I know, uh, I haven't followed any follow up research. And I don't think there has been done. But since you asked, I would actually be interested in seeing that maybe I'm going to do it. <laughs> OK, cool. That's good. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So uh, we have a question from the chat. Uh, yeah. 
to what extent has the unique amount heuristic changed over time? Is it still as prevalent? Uh, to be honest, the last time I ran uh, this heuristic was back in 2018. So unfortunately, I don't have any data to support, you know, any answer. Um, the, 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 um, the thing that I can answer you is uh, this extra slide I've created like uh, a couple of minutes ago before our talk is uh, basically showing the following. Um, you can see the three different pools of Zcash. The transparent pool is, that, is the set of the T addresses I described earlier. This is all basically the T addresses that are the same as Bitcoin. The sprout pool is the pool I described earlier with the you know legacy Z addresses. And the sapling pool is the, a new pool that was created in order uh, to tackle two issues. First of all, the cryptography problem I, I mentioned earlier, there was this bug I was telling you about. And also the sampling pool is the new type of Z addresses that are actually much faster to operate. So a very big problem that Zcash had when we were interacting with it is that mobile, that users that were using their mobile, it was very hard for them, infinitely possible to interact with the pool because the mobile device wasn't able to handle the load in terms of memory and CPU that the zero knowledge proofs had uh, associated with them. So basically a lot of people could not interact with the pool even if they wanted to. So they made this third pool called sapling that uh, made it much easier. It was, it's much far faster and much lighter. So basically this was a very good development in terms of the user's um, experience. Uh, but the main key point uh, to take from this graph and the reason I'm showing you this is that as you can see up until today, the, the difference between the transparent pool and the sapling pool is huge. So still people are using uh, the pool in a very, you know, restricted way, let's say, like they're not using it as much as, you know, we would think they would use it. But in terms of the specific values, because as, um, you know, um, the, the user in the chat asked, I don't know if uh, this changed. So that's kind of uh, leads into a question that I'd asked on the, the research hub discussion, but what's the um, utility of a T2T -T transaction? Like, Why is this the grand majority of Zcash transactions considering it's a privacy coin? Why wouldn't everything be Z to Z? If everything was a Z to Z, um, first of all, in the beginning of the in the beginning of the protocol, as it was, it would be extremely hard to use, right? It was it, it wouldn't be an attractive cryptocurrency because the um, the Z to Z transactions were very slow, and they were you know they required an actual PC. You couldn't do it with your mobile phone. So if they started, if they initiated the protocol by, by just having Z to Z, um, it would be you know very bad for the actual publicity of the of the coin, like not many people would use it. Um, the reason it's not integrated now is, uh, I, I, I can't answer this question. There, there may be an actual technical limitation that I'm not aware of. Um, one thing I can guess is that if they try to do a soft fork now and you know made everything Z to Z, uh, maybe this would disrupt, disrupt the network a lot. Um, other issues may have to do with um, basically exchanges having Zcash as one of an option. Maybe some exchanges would be reluctant to add Zcash in their coins if this was extremely private. So maybe the fact that um, most of the transactions are public, are transparent and hence inherit the problems of Bitcoin, maybe this looks more appealing to um, some exchanges that you know wish to have um, very you know transparent coins in their, you know, in their list. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, so when I read your paper, one thing which I thought was really interesting was the case study of the shadow brokers. Yeah. Do you mind just kind of like describing who they are? And um, the quote that you had within it was, uh, our assumption was that users paying the shadow brokers were not likely to be regular Zcash users, but were rather using it for the main purpose of making this payment. And so sure. you're able to kind of so just one, um, why, like, why wouldn't they hire someone like yourself to help consult in order to make the transactions more, tra or not, or uh, opaque so that way, you know, it was harder to track what was going on with them? So basically, uh, in terms of the users that pay shadow brokers, um, they were basically a, a hacker collective that um, th they published zero day uh, vulnerabilities. They published, you know, vulnerabilities in s several softwares instead of you know um disclosing it to the appropriate you know authorities if whether that would be the developers or whatever they just sell them to users that will actually pay them so if you're a user and you want to pay a hackers 
a hacker to sell you something. Um, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't do that. So I, I'm not exactly certain if you would use an intermediate in order to hide this activity or not. Um, maybe the fact uh, that shadow brokers were paid in Zcash was because according to them and according to the users that paid them was the most privacy private uh, privacy friendly coin. So there was no way, you know, people would uh, be able to find that, you know, we're interacting with each other. So maybe they thought that it would be impossible, but uh, as we show in the paper, it's, um, it's more than possible because basically the payments of the hackers were very unique. We're actually very big values. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so a question we just got from the chat is, how much of uh, these data conclusions do you think have changed since 2018, in your opinion? The data conclusions? Uh, the data as in the usage of the pool, as I show here, hasn't changed much. Still, people um, don't use it uh, that often. Um, in terms of the founder's activity, we know that they changed their uh, founders, um, their behavior in terms of exchange uh, interacting with the pool. Um, what has changed and is, uh, as I said, very interesting is the fact that now you can interact with this sapling pool, which is a form of a shielded pool, much, much faster than you, you, you used to. So basically now it's more appealing to users if than, even if they're using like a mobile wallet. So I think these are the main key points that have changed. Of course, there's no longer the crypto, um, you know, bug that was present. But these are the features that I am aware of that have changed in terms of data. Cool. So, so in your paper, uh, you make a couple of mention of future works that you'd like to do, like uh, classifying Z to Z transactions and identifying more bonding pools. Have yeah. you uh, have you done any work on those? I'm curious uh, if there's an update. Uh, so. We did a work with my colleague, Anya Piotrowska, which was basically um, using mixed networks. I don't know if you're aware of mixed networks. It's uh, basically yeah. a more um, privacy friendly way of communicating anonymously. It's more private than Tor. And we actually tried to integrate it with Zcash because um, despite uh, except the vulnerabilities we mentioned uh, in our paper, there, there's also the, the network layer question. Because even if you work on an application, that on its application layer is fully private, but let's say that everything is a Z to Z address, right? So observing the blockchain, you get nothing. But if you are a node of Zcash and you just listen to the communication, there's a lot of things you can infer as other research has shown. So basically in terms of the future work, what we did was uh, uh, connecting um, a mixed network with Zcash in order to make it even more uh, private. Other colleagues of mine from UCL also, uh, Sarah Zuvi, uh, Alex Hicks, and Harry Youssef have written a very nice uh, short paper about uh, incentivizing users to using Zcash. Because as I mentioned in the presentation, one of the main problems um, that you know Zcash had when we were interacting with it was that they didn't have enough incentives for the users to use the pool. It was slow. It was you know heavy for the particular client. There was not much um, incentives uh, used. Okay, cool. Makes sense. Um, so one last question that I had is, it seems like the Zcash community has been uh, really grateful for your work. Can you yep. kind of comment on how blockchain teams can collaborate with academics like yourself to improve their products and kind of poke holes within the protocol? Um, I think uh, Zcash is um, a very good example on um, how basically a, a company because you know Zcash, the Zcash Foundation, like I say, is a company that you know runs the Zcash um, cryptocurrency. Has a lot of you know uh, has academics working for the company and uh, is actually influenced a lot of, from the academic work that is that's happening because of uh, uh, for Zcash, like the work we did, and it shows that basically the more collaboration there is. The, the better is, um, you know, the updates of the protocol and the patching of the vulnerabilities. And in general, the, you know, um, it, it, it actually works better. And uh, I think this, the same applies to, you know, the majority of the technologies that are out there, uh, because when a research is put in a particular uh, product, like let's say Zcash, for example, the researchers like ourselves, like the, we dive very deep into the details of the protocol. And sometimes we see things that are not visible um, to, uh, to the creators of the protocol. So I think the collaboration between the two entities is, is very important and uh, I would strongly you know, encourage it for any company. 
Yeah, no, thank you for walking through that. Um, so we have one last question left on the Research Hub discussion. And if anybody else in the audience has any more questions, you know, go ahead and uh, put them in the chat and I'll make sure you get to them. But so the last question here, uh, Joshua Gardner asks, since your paper was published, have any other privacy coins been created that provide greater anonymity or more difficult to perform heuristics on? Mm, good question. My supervisor created a coin called Kiss Kiss uh, that actually pro um, was, is a privacy coin. Uh, it was recently um, accepted in, and it's going to be published. Uh, I can perhaps um, uh, tag you know the link of the paper in you know in the form so people can take a look. It's actually a private coin that works in a very different way than any other coin works. So in my opinion, it's a very interesting work to see. Um, other technologies are not exactly privacy coins that have been created, but a privacy enhancing technologies on top of existing uh, cryptocurrencies. As I said, in Bitcoin, for example, you have the Wasabi wallet that uses the CoinJoin technology in order to create uh, private transactions for Bitcoin. So although it's not, you know, obviously a new currency, it's a, a, an addition of privacy on top of existing currency. Another very, very nice example is the Lightning Network, which basically operates on top of Bitcoin and aims to basically tackle the problems of scalability and privacy of uh, Bitcoin. So there are other technologies created, uh, but in terms of the coins, uh, I can only think of the one that, that I mentioned. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so uh, that's pretty much all the questions that I had. If anybody else in the audience, if anything pops up, uh, feel free to put them on the Research Hub discussion page. And then, George, you know, if you have the time, it would be awesome if you could get to them. Um, I want to Actually, um, whenever I have time, I hope it's going to be very, very soon. I'm going to add uh, updated graphs than the ones I showed because I, I, I see there is interest um, on people on how basically uh, the scope changed after the release of our paper. So I'm, I'll try to recreate the graphs and uh, see uh, and ask the question, has it changed a lot or not? Awesome. Um, and then, so this is kind of funny, in the chat, James says, uh, was he paid for this? He should be. So I think everybody everybody thinks he did a good job. So thank you so much, George. This is awesome. We got- Thank you very much for the great feedback. <laughs> we got like this. one more question. Uh, yeah. So where will the updated graphs be posted? Um, we have basically a media portion within the yeah. uh, George's papers page on Research Hub. So uh, I'll share a link to that and- um, Put it there. Yeah, we can just put it there. It'd be easiest probably. And just let me know when you do that, George, and I'll notify everybody that it's out there. We'll do, we'll do. As soon as possible because, you know, there's some other projects I'm working on currently, so. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, if there aren't any other questions, uh, thanks so much for doing this. This is fascinating. I know I learned a ton. It seems like a lot of people in the chat did too. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.